Happy homecoming week. Lots of news around the world of sports, so let's get to it. My name is Don Akpoa. This is Tiger Tally. The Green Game is an opportunity to inform fans of their responsibilities on game day in regards to keep campus clean, reduce waste, and recycle. Auburn only accepts plastic and aluminum recycling, not glass. Putting glass bottles in the recycling bins hurts the recycling effort. The Green Game will feature on field recognition of the Spirit of Sustainability Award recipients giveaways to promote recycling not only on game day, but also at the local, regional, and state levels. The, Tuma, the Tumors Oaks were flourishing and rolled as Auburn football beat LSU, sadly shortly after midnight, Josh and Weist set one of the Oaks on fire. Weist was arrested shortly after on the charge of harming a vulnerable object, although the extent of the damage is unclear. For now, the beloved Oak is still standing tall. On Saturday, the equestrian team was presented with their national championship rings. The team received their rings at Saturday football games. Up next, we'll jump into the realm of Auburn sports. You're watching Tiger Tally on Eagle Eye TV, Channel 6. Welcome back. Equestrian opened up their season this past Friday. The defending national champions put on a show as they took down the Ole Miss Rebels. Soccer took full advantage of being on the road this weekend. On Friday, the Tigers took down the number 12 Gators in Gainesville for the first time in program history, winning 3-0. Two of the goals came from Kristen Dodson. The Tigers then traveled to Georgia and defeated the Bulldogs 4-1. Kristen Dodson again netted two goals. Dodson was named the SEC Offensive Player of the Week and the National Player of the Week after having four goals, including two game winners and two assists in the team's two SEC road victories. Soccer returns home this Friday for yet another SEC faceoff. Volleyball hosted the LSU Tigers in the Auburn Arena this past Friday. Auburn Tigers volleyball kicked off SEC play against LSU in a match to see who was the better Tiger at the Auburn Arena on Friday night. The Tigers cruised to the first two sets of the match with a 25-22 lead. Outside hitter Brianna McCrory led the stats with 20 kills, and libero Jesse Earl with 28 bids. Auburn nearly defeated LSU just three sets in, but they responded with the comeback by winning both the third and fourth sets 25-23. Courtney Fierce from LSU led the stats with eight blocks. Auburn Tiger Alexa Philly provided a total of 50 assists. Tiger fans fill the stands keeping the game live as well as cheerleaders. Auburn Tigers went on to win the fifth set 15-9 to take the match three sets to two from the LSU Tigers. With Eagle Eye Sports, this is Taylor Harrison and Donald Akpola. Volleyball will be hungry for another victory as they travel to face Mississippi State next Friday at 7. From one LSU takedown to the next. Auburn football took on the LSU Tigers in Jordan-Hare Stadium this Saturday. Sean White and the Auburn offense struck first after Daniel Carson made a 51-yard field goal. Later, Danny Etling found Foster Moranu for the three-yard touchdown for LSU to take the lead 7-3. Auburn backs bounce with, bounced back with three straight Daniel Carson field goals to take the lead 12-10 in the third quarter. LSU took the lead after a field goal, but Daniel Carson stepped up to, take, to the occasion again with two field goals in the fourth quarter to take the lead 18-13. On LSU's last drive, Danny Etling and the Tigers drove down to the field to the Auburn 10. On fourth and six, the LSU offense hurried to the line to get the playoff in time. LSU snapped the ball and threw it for a touchdown and then back of the end zone for the win. Or so they thought. After review, the offense did not get the playoff in time and Auburn came away with the win. The win brings, back, brings Auburn to 2-2 two and two for the season and drops LSU from the AP Top 25. In response to the loss, LSU fired head coach Les Miles and offensive coordinator Cam Cameron. 
Auburn's next game will be at home against Louis in a Monroe for homecoming. Kickoff is at 2.30. We'll be right back with what's going on in the professional sports world when we return. You're watching Tiger Tally on Eagle Eye TV Channel 6. So, I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Welcome back to Tiger Tally. My name is Erica Justiniano. As we approach the final weekend of the MLB regular season, we say goodbye to the beloved Turner Field. The Atlanta Braves are set to play the, play the Detroit Tigers in their final game at Turner Field on Sunday. First pitch is set for 310. The Braves will play at SunTrust Park in Cobb County starting in the 2017 season. Tune in to Eagle Eye News next Monday for full coverage of Turner Field's final game. The sporting world is in mourning after two unexpected deaths Sunday. Golf legend Arnold Palmer was admitted to the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center Presbyterian on Thursday for some cardiovascular work and weakened over the past few days. Palmer died Sunday afternoon in Pittsburgh. Palmer was 87 years old. The Miami Marlins ace pitcher Jose Fernandez died in a boating accident early Sunday off South by South Beach in Miami. Fernandez died as a result of the impact of the crash. The MLB immediately canceled Sunday's games between the Marlins and the Braves once they were informed about the news. The Marlins organization painted his 16 and placed his ball cap on the mound in remembrance of him. The fun-loving, family-oriented, game-changing pitcher was just 24 years old. Here are a few highlights from Fernandez's MLB career. Getting called up to the big leagues and uh, being there opening day was special. One, two, three inning for Jose Fernandez in his major league debut. And Fernandez, left field, it's deep, it is good, he got it! The kid homers the left. Fernandez, eight innings in the books. Jose Fernandez, who has just been outstanding. Got him! Oh, yeah! Blessed to have my teammates, you know, that, that trust me and that, you know, that believe in me and the work that we put in as a team. And I'm, you know, I'm just glad that I have them there behind me and, and you know, they believe in me. What what a what a story, you know, what a powerful moment in baseball history for him to hit Gordon hit that home run. Like it's just so sad. I know, I know it's hard for him and the whole entire organization, many players around the league and I loved what he said after he hit that home run, you know. If you don't believe in God now then you, you pretty much have to now after yeah. he hit that home run. Jose, we're thought our thoughts and prayers are with you and your family. Rest easy, buddy. Up next we'll see what's going on in our fantasy football league. This is Tiger Tally on Eagle Eye TV, Channel Six. Gosh, Darlene, it sure is amazing how much we have in common. I know, Larry. We both love three-car pileups. We both were built in Buffalo. And we both know wearing safety belts help save thousands of lives. Yeah, this is fascinating. Don't mind Vince. He's getting over a bad break. I know. Janet's picking up the pieces, too. They're in here. I wish they understood it's all worth it to get people to buckle up. Hey, lacerated lovebirds. I sense a major crush. You could learn a lot from a dummy. Buckle your safety belt. Talk about head over heels. An expected win, an unexpected win, and a win that came in the last minute. I'm your host, Meredith Brito, and this is the Fantasy Football Blitz on Tiger Tally. Here 
today are the top three point scorers from week three. Micah, Erica, JJ, how are you all feeling today? Doing well, can't complain. Yeah, no, I'm doing good. Nice clutch win for me. It's a beautiful day. Fall is here. Love football. Great time to be alive. What is losing? <laughs> <laughs> this past week came with a surprising upset. The 0-2 Olivia's came away with a win against the 2-0 TV Week team phase. Also, four of the five matchups were won by 30 points or more this week. The week three winners were me, JJ, Erica, Olivia, and Micah, who again led the league for the second time with a score of 144.46. The only remaining undefeated team is Micah's. Micah, how has your team been so consistent this season? Uh, I would say the key is to not look at what your projected points are every week. you got to play who you think is the best matchup. And I got a lot of rookies on the team that are surprising this year, Todd Gurley and Ezekiel Elliott. And so those two have really been my, uh, my workhorses. And they're projected like six points every week for some weird reason. They give me about 15. So can't complain. This week will be our fourth week of fantasy football. Matchups this week will include the Deckers vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Bortles. It's on like Gronky Kong vs. Edelme Long Time. <laughs> One Last Sheep of Blast vs. Honey Punches of Oats. And the best team against the Olivias. With week three under our team's belt, how do you all see the rest of the season going? I mean, for me personally, I think it's still, <laughs> uh, it's only been three weeks. It's still very early. Um, NFL teams are still trying to figure out who they mm -hmm. are, who their go-to players are going to be. So I think we're all still in it. Only three weeks. It's nothing to worry about. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of my players have been not scoring. You know, my number one draft pick, Antonio Brown, had an awful week in week two. So, you know, hopefully, you know, he'll get it together. The Steelers are definitely coming coming as one team. Uh, the New England Patriots, they're my defense. They're a lot of my offense. And I have Tom Brady sitting on that bench until week five. So he's going to be coming in right. really clutch for me for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. I've had a year where I started off 0-6, and, and then I went on to win the championship. So it's literally, yeah. it's, it's never too late. Um, but I do want to say a special thank you to the Olivias for drafting Adrian Peterson right before me, uh, <laughs> for saving me from myself, Absolutely. Uh, to allow me for this season. Definitely. <laughs> Tonight we have an AFC matchup with the Miami Dolphins traveling to face the Cincinnati Bagels. Who do you all have in the game tonight? I'll take the Bagels. <laughs> I'll take this one first. I think that... Um, Cincinnati's just a lot better football team mm -hmm. than Miami does. I don't think it's going to be that competitive of a game. No, I don't think it's going to be that competitive. Uh, Andy Dalton is just going to run all over with A.J. Green. That's a tough one. I do like Tannehill. I'm probably one of the few people uh, that actually enjoys watching Ryan Tannehill play. I think he's going to be a good quarterback. I think he's still growing. He's still right. going through a lot of growing pains. But it's hard to pick against the Red Rifle. Uh, yeah. Andy Dalton is a good guy. Um, so... We'll go with Cincinnati. We'll go. I mean, I usually like to try and be the person that is the outcast of the group and right. go with the other team on the Thursday night game. But I just haven't seen enough out of the Dolphins this year yet uh, to gain my confidence and give them the win tonight. Let's move on to college football. Number seven Stanford will be traveling to number ten Washington. The spread is in favor of Washington with three and a half points. Who do you all have in this game? I've got Stanford. I think that Christian McCaffrey is just too dynamic of a playmaker. Washington really struggled last week with Arizona, and Stanford hasn't shown any signs of struggling so far this season. I like the Cardinal. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to agree with you there. Stanford just looks like a just a pounding team. They're not really letting, letting up in any of their contests. They're not really struggling where it is. You know, as he said, Washington gave uh, Arizona gave Washington a scare last week, but Stanford, I'm got, I got them over the Huskies. I think the only reason Washington's favorite in this game is because it is a home game. Right. Um, when you have, and you, you said it, J.J., when you have Christian McCaffrey in the backfield, everyone knows every single week that this guy is going to be getting the football, and no one can stop him yet. So what makes me think this so week's going to be any different? <laughs> I don't. Cardinals. Absolutely. Next, we have number eight, Wisconsin, traveling to number four, Michigan. The spread is in favor of Michigan with 10 points. Who do you all have in this game? This is a really big game um, in the Big Ten. Last week, Wisconsin with another tough test. Uh, I didn't think they would be able to beat Michigan State, mm -hmm. but they did. Again, I'm going to pick against them. I like Michigan <laughs> to protect home or turf there at the Big House. Yeah, I, I just Michigan at home, I can't pick Wisconsin. I can't go against the Wolverines. I'm going to have to go with Michigan. They're just too strong at home in that environment. Wisconsin's going to have a tough time moving the ball. Last week on this show, I picked Michigan State over Wisconsin. I was saying that Michigan State wasn't getting the respect they deserved. <laughs> um, and then they went out there and laid an absolute goose egg. Yeah. But Wisconsin going for you know the win of the entire state of Michigan, 
I'm a Minnesota boy. I can never pick Wisconsin. <laughs> and I wish I was wearing khakis right now, but I'm not. I'm going Harbaugh and the Wolverines. <laughs> and it's a big house. I mean, come Absolutely. On, it is. Next, you have a matchup that could potentially determine the SEC East. Number 11, Tennessee, will be traveling to number 25, UGA. The spread is in favor of Tennessee with three and a half points. Who do you all have in this game? You know, this is the first true road game for Tennessee. They, uh, the one game against Virginia Tech was at Bristol Motor Speedway. So it's going to be an adjustment for them. And Tennessee's a team that has struggled uh, out the gates, but they really found a rhythm in the second half. And this is a team that what you notice already is that when they're faced with adversity, they know how to bounce back. And for that reason, I think Tennessee wins this football game. You know, I'm actually going to go with the Georgia Bulldogs in this one. It's at home. They're always competitive when they play Tennessee. Tennessee, yes, they did have a strong second half versus Florida last week, but that first half showed a lot of what they're about when it comes to this game. In Georgia, you're not going to get away with that. There's a big difference between playing at, in Athens versus playing in Knoxville versus the Gators. So it's going to be a whole different environment than being at home. They have to play four quarters. They just can't play two quarters. I got the Georgia Bulldogs winning. See, I, I talked about this with J.J. earlier in the week. If we could somehow find a way to combine Tennessee of last year and Tennessee of this year, then you'd have a team oh, that could play a complete game. <laughs> yeah. It'd be scary because yeah. the potential on that football team is infinite. I mean, every year it's Tennessee. This is going to their back. Yeah. This is going to be good Tennessee football again. And then they only play a half of football. But the scary part is, is no matter how big of a hole they dig themselves into in the first half, they always seem to dig themselves out of it in the second half this year. So I'm going to take Tennessee – Big game for Coach Smart. This is Absolutely. why they brought George, you know, Georgia brought him in was to win big games. Mm -hmm. Had a big game on the road last week. Didn't go so no. well. So you got to protect your home field. If exactly. You're smart. exactly. You got to. Definitely. Exactly. Next, we have UNC traveling to number 12, Florida State. The spread is predicted for Florida State to win by at least 10 and a half points. Do you all see UNC coming away with an upset? Not at all. I think Florida <laughs> State wins this football game. I think they're going to be able to protect home turf like we had talked about. Dalvin Cook, how are you going to stop him? Uh, just you very think a Gene Chizik defense can't stop him? Come on. He, uh, he's this got, is Auburn. It's a big week for him. <laughs> you know, uh, he, he's a Duke fan back up. You know, he's a Duke fan. He can't pull for UNC at all. Um, but, no, I agree. Florida State just looks too, too dominant. Uh, UNC did have a strong showing versus UGA in that opening game, but I just think Florida State, you know, they're, they're playing good football. I'm going to go with them. I'm going to go with Florida State as well. Um, I just don't see UNC going into Doak and coming out with a win. No. Sorry, Mom. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Next, we have one of the hottest offenses in college football right now, Louisville, traveling to number five Clemson to face their defense. Who do you all have in this matchup? Oh, man. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a fun one. Absolutely. Yeah, a great it's going to be good. This is, this is what college football is all about, these primetime games. Early in the season, we have two Heisman hopeful quarterbacks right mm -hmm. now in Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson. I like Clemson at home. Uh, I think that Clemson has not really played up to their potential, but there's so many weapons that they have on offense. Louisville, you have Lamar Jackson, but other guys are going to have to step mm -hmm. up and start making plays for him because Clemson's not these teams that Louisville's been playing. And for that reason, I think Clemson has what it takes. They know how to play in these type games, and I think Clemson wins. You know, uh, I'm going to go with Louisville based on the pure fact that they just embarrassed Florida State. Yes, it is a road game for them. Yes, it's Clemson at home in their Death Valley. But I'm going to have to pick Louisville. Just I think Lamar Jackson is just playing out of his mind. Yeah, okay, a couple people are going to have to step up. But I just don't think that Clemson, yes, they're getting better every week, but they're not playing at the caliber that they should be playing at. As much as the preseason boasts that we thought Clemson was going to be the greatest team this year. No, Louisville is shining. Louisville is strong. I'm going with Louisville on the road. So I got to be a tiebreaker here. <laughs> um, I think the big thing in football, I think the best team always wins. And as amazing as his numbers are, you know, we said the other day, it's video game numbers. Yeah. I mean, the guy Ridiculous. hasn't played a fourth quarter yet. Yeah. But I think Clemson from top to bottom is the best team. This is their first big test of the season, in my opinion. And it's just, it's a, it's a toss-up. Like, it's a really <laughs> it's hard a game to pick. I'm going with Clemson, though. It's at home. That's kind of the big factor for me, and I think they're a more fundamental team. Um, and it might just be the, the wing T offense in me where I just love fundamental football. Yeah. Um, but that's why I'm going with Clemson. Shade. There. We have Louisiana Monroe traveling to Auburn. The spread is in favor of Auburn with 32 and a half points. Do you all see an upset in this game? There's no way that Louisiana Monroe will come in and beat Auburn. I think the key for this game is ever we since hope. Gus Malzahn relinquished the play-calling duties, 
over to Rhett Lashley. Auburn still hasn't found the touchdown. Six field goals last week against LSU. I think that it's a very important game for Auburn to establish a rhythm now with Lashley calling the plays before you get back into SEC play this season. But Auburn wins this game easily. Yeah, Auburn's definitely going to win this game. Uh, I think the biggest test for Auburn in this game is they've got the score touchdowns. Daniel Carlson, you know, he's going to kick and kick and kick and kick, but eventually it's it's not going to be enough. We're not going to be able to score three points at a time. We've really got to start putting up six, six, seven points a drive. And and Auburn's going to win. ULM, I'm sorry, you guys just don't have a chance. I'm sorry. It's not it's not going to be the story of the Jaguars of South Alabama over Mississippi State. No. Sorry to say it, it's our homecoming. Hey, ULM They're did gonna, beat Alabama back in the uh, day. That's back in the day. That's just like saying Troy almost beat uh, Mississippi State. That was Saban's first year, though, so, wasn't it? Let, stare. Uh, Auburn, <laughs> think, Auburn, Auburn over the Warhawks. I'm going with Auburn as well. I mean, it's going to be hard not here. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I, this to me is more, like you said, it's, it's a tune-up game. It's, okay, how sharp can we look on offense? I want our starters to play a solid two-and-a-half quarters. I want us to be blowing them out of the water. I want us to be crisp on offense, getting play calls in, nice tempo. Because right. we're going on the road next week to Mississippi State for the first time this season. And I don't know about you, but for the first time in my life, I don't want more cowbell. So... <laughs> That's a very hard, right. you know, atmosphere to play in for your first road game, and especially that's why the calls got to be sharp because you're going to be hearing just ringling ling in your ear all day, all night. Exactly. <laughs> so, and, and have you guys ever been to Mississippi State? Oh. No, I haven't. Oh, yeah, I have been there for a game. It is an environment that you don't want to be in as the opposing team's fan. I am telling you, it is not a good time. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, like you said, it's a game we got to win if we want to go to a bowl game. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's it for this week's episode of Tiger Tally. For more on the latest in Auburn sports, tune in to AU Nation and Monday Night News right here on Eagle Eye TV Channel 6. See you all next week. Happy homecoming and War Eagle.